political parties, campaigns, and elections. I want to start with a question, which is, where do you get your campaign information from? It's, it's a, a class that's essentially intended to cover the entire uh, campaign structure from when candidates first get nominated all the way through the general election. It, it's, it's been a little different. It's forcing me to cover a lot of ground in that class that I never thought I would have to cover. And, and you know, it's all, I think it's for the better because we're talking about things that normally I don't get to talk about. We haven't focused too much on this specific campaign, um, but we're looking more at historical uh, evidence and how that is translating and the process that we've gotten to this point now. So two slogans for you from the 1840s. 54 for your fight. Anyone know what that means? Isn't this the Canada? Yeah, it's right there we should go to war with Canada. I mean, it's actually led to some really fascinating discussions in class just because things have been so unusual. It's been a lot of information to kind of comprehend and see how we've progressed through history to what we're having right now. How many different issues have come up in this campaign that you can think of? Jobs. Jobs. ISIS. ISIS. Immigration. Immigration. Okay. The wall, right? The wall is separate from immigration. It is. It's a separate issue. It's kind of been mind-boggling. There's so many things that you don't realize that are happening that now all of a sudden you're seeing, and like I didn't even know that that was influencing our political debate. Part of the process of having the discussion in class is to say, you know, yeah, this is very unusual. It's not necessarily bad, but we need to explain why this is so different than previous elections. Why does this look so out of sync with what our elections typically look like?